30-year-old pilot Francis Gary Powers was winging through the atmosphere at the edge of space over Soviet territory, when suddenly a state-of-the-art surface-to-air missile took to the skies to take him down. It was May 1st of 1960, and Powers was on a nine-hour reconnaissance mission to gather intelligence about Soviet military installations. No enemy missile system had shot down a U-2 aircraft at those heights for the past six years, but the Soviets were on high alert, and Powers had no way of escaping the imminent hit. The incident would put the world's most powerful nations at the brink of war after the USSR discovered that the spy plane was gathering information for the CIA. Peeking into the Iron Curtain During the 1950s, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a dangerous arms race that involved weapons of mass destruction, and they invested millions of dollars in developing Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs. The continuous rivalry to shift the balance of the Cold War eventually rose to new heights as part of their nuclear deterrence policies, and both U.S. President and veteran Dwight D. Eisenhower and Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev took swift actions to confront the escalating crisis. While Khrushchev favored the rapid development of nuclear missiles in silos to counter the U.S. atomic supremacy, Eisenhower adopted a more discreet approach and approved a secret plan to gather information on Soviet atomic capabilities and their intentions. Although American spies and Soviet defectors were already working for the CIA, aerial reconnaissance was the quickest and most reliable way of gathering information on the enemy. And as dangerous as it was, the Soviets followed the same policy. Tensions rose to such heights that during the Geneva summit in 1955, Eisenhower proposed an open skies plan to Khrushchev. The plan was simple. Each country would be allowed to make overflights to conduct mutual aerial inspections of nuclear facilities and launch pads. However, Khrushchev refused the proposal, as Soviet policy strictly rejected international inspections of any form. He even went on to say that the USSR had developed more nuclear missiles than the US had initially thought, which forced Eisenhower to implement the US spy plane program. By 1956, American U-2 spy planes would begin reconnaissance flights over Soviet territory to gather information about top-secret USSR military facilities. The U-2 Spy Plane The Lockheed U-2, also known as the Dragon Lady, was a U.S. single-gen engine, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft developed by Lockheed Skunk Works and operated by the U.S. Air Force and the Central Intelligence Agency. Lockheed got approval from the government to begin working on the U-2 in 1954. Still, many of its essential reconnaissance components were already being developed for years. The U-2 took to the skies for the first time in August of 1955 and instantly grabbed the attention of NASA, the U.S. Air Force, and the CIA. High aspect ratio wings gave the U-2 glider-like capabilities that, combined with its weight, resulted in a solid speed and an operational ceiling of 70,000 feet. In addition, it was believed at the time that there was no radar or missile system capable of detecting the U-2, a quality that would allow the CIA to conduct covert operations and gather specific intelligence. The U-2 controls were exclusively designed for high-altitude flights, and the pilot had to wear a partially pressurized spacesuit that provided him with oxygen and protection if cabin pressure was lost. The Dragon Lady was also equipped with state-of-the-art Trimetragon A and B cameras, consisting of three 24-inch focal length, or 610mm cameras, with F-8 resolving 60 lines per millimeter and a ground resolution of 24 inches. Meanwhile, B was a panoramic camera that took pictures of an extensive area of the Earth's surface. Coupled with these high-resolution cameras, the U-2 spy plane also carried special sensors in the nose and wing pods that could collect communication signals, air samples, and radar imagery. In the dark. President Eisenhower was pleased with the first U-2 spy plane missions and the intelligence gathered without being detected by the enemy, as no Soviet fighter jets of the era were capable of reaching the altitude to the U-2, making it even more helpful for reconnaissance missions. In July of 1958, Eisenhower had a conversation with Pakistan's Prime Minister Firoz Khan Noon, in which he asked for permission to establish a secret intelligence facility in his country, from which the U-2 spy plane could be launched. The base was quickly established in Bada Bear, a location chosen for its proximity with Soviet Central Asia. From there, the U-2 could gather sufficient intelligence about secret Soviet facilities. However, Eisenhower decided that no American pilots would fly the U-2s over Soviet territory to avoid direct aggressions. That task fell to British pilots, who would not be affiliated with the CIA or U.S. Army, to prevent a conflict between the West and the East. 
The first two missions were a complete success and gave the U.S. an overview of Soviet ICBM capabilities. Then, in preparation for the Four Powers Summits of May 1960, Eisenhower approved spy plane missions piloted by Americans to gather more data about the Soviets. Although one of the pilots had a close encounter with Soviet MiG-19 fighters, the U-2 proved to be practically invisible for their radar and SAM systems. Or so they thought. The Soviets had indeed been able to detect the secret flights on their radars since 1956. Still, they lacked aircraft and missiles capable of striking the U-2 spy aircraft at 70,000 feet above the ground. Also, the Americans did not know that the entire Soviet armed forces were put on high alert during their last scheduled mission in April of 1960. Operation Grand Slam The last U-2 flight before the Paris summit happened was rescheduled from May 1st, 1960. Unaware of what awaited him, Captain and CIA agent Francis Gary Powers hopped into his U-2 for his planned flight across the Soviet Union. Powers carried with him a silver dollar that contained a lethal saxitonin-tipped needle that could put him out in seconds if he was captured by the enemy. He then gave the coin a last look and prayed that he never had to use it. Seconds later, the U-2 took off from Pakistan on a nine-hour flight that would take Powers to Norway under the codename Grand Slam. The objective was to photograph the Baikonur and Placet's cosmodromes and look for ICBM activity. During the flight's first hours, Powers proceeded with the mission as expected. Hovering through the atmosphere, close to the edge of space, Powers flew over Sverdlovsk, where he felt a sharp shock that shook his U-2. An instant later, he saw an explosion nearby. It was game over. A Soviet S-75 SAM had just exploded close to his U-2, and Powers realized the enemy had detected him. The violent explosion caused the U-2 to drop abruptly, and a second S-75 then scored a direct hit on it. Powers struggled to bail out amidst the fire and smoke that began to choke him, but finally made it out. The CIA agent then slowly parachuted down to Earth and saw tiny dots that eventually became armed Soviet soldiers aiming at him. Meanwhile, the aircraft plummeted from the sky, and for an instant, Powers remembered the silver dollar. He could take it right now to avoid being captured and interrogated, fulfilling the CIA protocol. However, he had a strong desire to live and chose not to do it. The pilot was captured as soon as he hit the ground. Incidentally, 30 minutes later, a Soviet SAM accidentally took down a MiG-19 that had taken off to pursue the U-2 spy plane. Its pilot, Sergei Safranov, did not make it alive. Fate Days after Powers went missing in action, NASA issued a press release indicating that one of its aircraft had gone missing near Turkey. According to their cover-up story, the pilot had fallen unconscious while the autopilot was engaged. Believing that Powers had passed away and his U-2 destroyed, the CIA and U.S. government followed through with the story. Regrettably, they all fell under Khrushchev's plan, who had opted for silence before telling the media that a spy plane had been shot down in Soviet territory. However, he did not say anything about its pilot. The U.S. continued selling its cover-up story, claiming that NASA's aircraft was a weather research aircraft that may have been shot down over USSR territory. But Khrushchev later revealed that Powers was alive and well, and publicly acknowledged his affiliation with the CIA. The Eisenhower administration was uncovered and forced to admit the covert operation. The Paris summit was a disaster, and Powers was sentenced to 10 years of confinement. He claimed to have been treated well by the Soviets, and was eventually released after serving two years in February of 1962 as part of the first ever spy swap exchange with the United States. Upon his return, Powers was hailed as a hero by some and a traitor by others for refusing to take the silver dollar. It was not until a decade later that public opinion shifted and recognized his patriotism and commitment to serving his country. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the capabilities of the U-2 spy plane. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos.